Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your instructor for this AZ104 Azure Administrator Associate Examination course. We are at module 7 which is all about Azure Storage and in this lesson we are going to learn about how to manage Azure Storage. Within this lesson we are going to learn about what is Storage Explorer, how can you import and export a service, what is Azure Data Box and how can you use AZ Copy? And what do you mean by data transfer tool selection? And when I'm explaining about these concepts, I will go back and forth to show you a demonstration around how to use these tools and services so you, so you exactly know what I mean by that. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Let's talk about Azure Storage Explorer. Azure Storage Explorer is a standalone app that makes it easy to work with Azure storage data on Windows, Mac operating system and Linux. You can download Azure Storage Explorer for free. So as soon as you go to the Azure Storage Explorer page, this is where you can download and you can select different versions of your operating system what you are using. With Storage Explorer, you can access multiple accounts and subscription and manage all your storage content. To fully access resources after you sign in, Azure Storage Explorer requires both management and data layer permissions. This means that you need Azure Active Directory permissions, which gives you access to your storage account, the containers in the account and data in the container. So let me download the Storage Explorer and show you how to connect your Azure. All right, so the download is finished. I'm going to launch this application to install it. I'm going to install it for only this user. Accept the agreement and install it. Because it's a small application, the installation is fairly quick. So I completed the installation. I'm going to launch the Storage Explorer now. All right, so now the Storage Explorer is installed. You can see the information about the, you can see the latest version and the information about the Storage Explorer. If you want to modify the settings, this is where you can change the settings. I like to keep it as dark all the time, but I know that not many people prefer that. So I'm gonna change it to light for this demonstration. And click on connect to connect to your Azure subscription. So it gives you an option to add an Azure account. Is it Azure China, Germany, user, US government or other environment? So I'm going to select Azure. And you have multiple options as well. Do you want to connect using a connection string or shared access key or a storage account name, etc. So I'm going to click next. It gives me a prompt to connect to an account using username and password. So I provided the username and password and I'm going to sign in to the Azure account. All right. So now it is connected to my Azure subscription. So it, you can see that it is connected to my Azure subscription. Now I can see all my storage account over here. I can simply expand the storage account which I want to connect to and expand the type of storage service. And I can see there is a file. I can either upload or download any files within it. I'm going to simply select upload and I'm going to select upload a file. So I'm going to, sh I'm going to upload a particular file. It's a PNG file. I'm going to upload to the root folder. So you can connect to an Azure subscription and work with the local development storage or you can attach to an external storage. So that's one way of managing your storage account. Let's look at the second way of managing your storage account. It's called import and export service. Azure import export service is used to securely import large amount of data to Azure blob storage and Azure files by shipping disk drives to an Azure data center. 
This service can also be used to transfer data from Azure Blob Storage to disk drives and ship it to your on-premises sites. Data from one or more disk drives can be imported either to an Azure Blob Storage or Azure Files. With the Azure Import Export service, you can supply your own disk drives and transfer data yourself. So let's look at some of the use case scenarios of Azure Import Export Service. Consider using Azure Import Export Service when uploading or downloading data over the network is too slow or getting additional network bandwidth is cost prohibitive. Scenarios where it is useful include migrating data to the cloud, content distribution, backup, and disaster recovery. So let's understand the import job process. An import job securely transfers large amount of data to the Azure Blob Storage and Azure files by shipping disk drives to Azure Data Center. In this case, you will be shipping hard drive containing your data. In order to perform an import, you will create an Azure Storage account, then identify the number of disks that you will need to and identify the number of disks that you will need to accommodate all the data that you want to transfer. Then identify a computer that you will need to perform the data copy and run the WAI import export tool to copy the data and use the Azure portal to create the import job and ship the disk to the destination you specified when creating the import job. Once the disk arrive at the destination, the Azure Data Center staff will carry out the data copy to the target Azure storage and ship the data and ship the disk back to you. The next step is export job. Export job transfer data from Azure storage to hard disk drives and ship to your on-premises sites. In order to perform an export, you follow these process. Identify the data in the Azure storage blob that you intend to export. Identify the number of disks that you will be needed to accommodate all the data that you want to transfer. Use the Azure portal to create the export job referencing the storage account. And ship the required number of disks to the Azure region hosting the Azure storage account. And once the disk arrive at the destination, Azure Data Center staff will carry out the data copy from the storage account to the disk that you provided. Let's understand what is data box. You can use data box to move stored or in-flight data to Azure quickly and cost effectively. There are data box products for both offline and online scenarios. So use Databox offline data transfer products to move large amounts of data to Azure when you are limited by time, network capability, or cost. Scenarios for offline Databox products include one-time migration, incremental transfers, and periodic updates. You can use Databox Disk, Databox, and Databox Heavy for any sort of offline transfer. You can move your data to Azure using common copy tools such as RoboCopy. All data is AES encrypted and the devices are wiped clean after upload in accordance with NIST Special Publication 800-88 Revision 1 standards. Let's understand the data box online scenarios. Data box online scenarios, you use either data box edge or Databox Gateway. So what is Databox Gateway? Databox Gateway transfers data to and from Azure. It's a virtual appliance based on virtual machine provisioned in your virtualized environment or hypervisor. The virtual device resides in your on-premises and you write data to it using NFS and SMB protocols. The device then transfers your data to Azure Block Blob, Page Blob, or Azure Files. 
So what is Databox Edge? Databox Edge is an on-premises physical network appliance transfers data to and from Azure. You can analyze, process, and transform your on-premises data before uploading to the cloud using AI-enabled edge computing capabilities. Azure Databox Edge is an AI-enabled edge computing device with network data transfer capabilities. You can use Azure Databox Gateway for cloud archival, data aggregation, and integration with on-premises workload. And you can use Databox Edge for pre-processed data or inference Azure machine learning or transfer data over network to Azure. All right, so what is AZ copy or AZ copy? An alternative method for transferring data is using AZ copy. The version of AZ copy is version 10 now, is the next generation command line utility for copying data to and from Azure Blob and file storage, which offers a redesigned command line interface and a new architecture for high performance reliable data transfers. Using AZ copy, you can copy data between a file system and a storage account or between storage accounts as well. So what are the new features of this AZ copy? Now AZ copy supports Azure data like storage gen 2 and supports copying an entire account to another account. And account to account copy is now using a new put from URL APIs. And there is some general performance improvements as well. We need to understand about what is the authentication options available with AZ copy as well. You can authenticate with Azure Active Directory or using SaaS tokens. Choosing the right tool for transfer is the trickiest part. Let's look at this particular following table to understand which tool do you select depending on your data set. You have the smallest data set to the largest data set. And considering different bandwidth requirement, you can figure out which solution you can use within Azure. It's either going to be Azure Import Export or AZ Copy or any other data box solution. Now that we have completed the module seven, which was all about Azure storage. In the next video, we're going to talk about module seven review questions. So I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.